Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 33 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, I think we have reached towards the end of the lesson. So it is time to answer a few questions now. So let us have a look at a few questions based on whatever we have studied so far. So question 1. What is meant by modification of root? What type of modification of root is found in the banyan tree, turnip and mangrove trees? I have already explained modification of root means the roots modifies itself taking up different shapes, different structures to, to cater to some special functions. So roots modify to perform special functions like respiration, food storage etc which are besides the primary function of the root because the primary function of the root is to provide anchorage to the plant to help in absorbing water and nutrients from the soil but other than those basic functions they can also perform some additional functions by certain modifications in their structure or form so that is known as modification of root now talking about a banyan tree in banyan tree we have the hanging roots so some of the branches they actually start growing downwards so they are known as hanging roots they provide additional support so what type of root modification is that hanging roots which are also known as prop roots in turnip in turnip the root is extremely swollen and that swollen root helps in storage of food so the tap root of turnip is swollen for food storage mangrove trees now these are aquatic plants and they have pneumatophores which help for respiration so some spike like structures are seen coming out of the water and those spike like structures have small pores called lengthy cells which help in exchange of gases so the pneumatophores help in respiration in case of mangrove trees so these are the different modifications of roots in banyan turnip and mangrove let us look at the next question how is a pinnately compound leaf, leaf different from a palmately compound leaf now i have already told this to you several times whenever this pinnate and palmate comes into picture remember it like this palmate is like your palm so your palm has five fingers all arising from the same point so that is how a palmate compound leaf will look like See here, this is like your palm. All the leaves are growing from the same point. Whereas in pinnately compound leaf, you have leaflets on a common axis and that axis is known as rachis. So in a pinnately compound leaf, leaflets are present on a common axis. Whereas in palmately compound leaf, leaflets arise from apex of midrib. So this is the midrib, apex of midrib, all the leaves will arise. Example is chestnut and here in pinnately compound leaf, the example is rose. Let's look at question 3. Justify the following statements on the basis of external features. Underground parts of a plant are not always roots. Well, that is very obvious. Now that we have studied about all the parts of the plant, we have actually seen that it is not always necessary that roots have to be underground. There can be aerial roots. We have actually seen roots which are above the ground. We have actually seen roots which help in respiration. They grow above the ground. At the same time, we have also seen that there are other parts of the plants which can be underground as well. For example, stems. We talked about underground stems, right? So underground parts of a plant are not always roots. They can be stems as well. There are plants where roots are aerial. Similarly, there are plants where the underground parts are the stems. For example, turmeric, onion, garlic, etc. In all these cases, we have underground stems. We have in fact spoke about so many different modifications of underground stems like rhizomes, tubers, right, corn and bulb. The second one is a flower is a modified shoot. Okay, here we had some more points like leaves also get modified into scales like potato. So these are also underground. Flower is a modified shoot. What is flower? I mean flower doesn't come magically in a plant. In a plant we have two systems. One is root system, the other is shoot system. Now the part of shoot system 
is the branches, the stem, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits. Now fruit, seeds, they all come from flowers, right? From where do flowers come? They come from the shoot. So we can say that flowers develop from shoot with special modifications for reproduction. So some shoots modify themselves to perform this function of reproduction and that modification, the result of that modification is nothing but flower. So flower is a modified shoot. Next one, differentiate between apocarpus and syncarpus ovary. So what, so now it may be got these two terms, new terms, apocarpus and syncarpus. Now when I say apocarpus ovary, it is a type of ovary where the carpels are free. What do I mean by carpels are free? That means one ovary with many carpels and they are not joined to each other. They are not united to each other. They are separate, separate. Whereas when I talk about the syncarpus ovary, the carpels are fused. So here you can look at the example. So this is an example of apocarpus ovary. So if you see, these are two carpels, maybe in the same flower, but they are separate, they are not united. But here if you see in syncarpus ovary, these are two carpels again, but the two carpels, the ovaries of the two carpels are fused together. So both are fused here. So this is known as a syncarpus ovary. So syn, syn word comes from sync, means synchronized. Synchronized means matched or fused. So that is how you can remember it. Question 5. How do the various leaf modifications help plants? Leaves also get modified for so many different purposes. For example, leaf spines help in defense. For example, cactus. Leaf tendrils help in climbing. So they, uh, climbers are the flexible, soft leaves which help to climb around neighboring objects. So it provides mechanical support to the plant. There are fleshy leaves like the onion which helps in food storage. Insectivorous leaves also help in trapping insects. For example, the pitcher plant, the leaves get modified into the shape of a pitcher. So it helps to catch insects, therefore it provides food to the plant. So with this we reach towards the end of this lesson. So I hope that this lesson on morphology of flowering plants would have helped you. So please go through the lesson and try to understand things clearly. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.